level 64 presents A play toy and video review Sit back and enjoy the show Hi there, welcome to a very special Lemon 64 Play Guide and Review. Now we'll be checking out the top 007 007 games, beginning with James Bond, released in 1984 by Parker Brothers. By pressing F5 we can change the difficulty levels, and by pressing F1 we can start that game. James Bond was the first James Bond game ever released on the Commodore 64 back in 1984 and as you can see the first level reminds me of Moon Patrol and all those moon buggy games that came out in the arcades. This is a conversion of the Atari game and on the Atari we could select the levels of the four available from the title page but on the C64 version we can only play through those levels and we don't get to see the next one until we've completed the previous one. The first level is a moon buggy stage where we have to shoot the diamonds in the sky and avoid the satellites who will drop bombs on us and that's very difficult as you can see. Of our bombing run, our car, which looks suspiciously like a Lotus Esprit, can jump into water, but if we touch any of the scenery, we'll die. And once we jump into the water, we can also attack some frogmen as well, and they'll also kill us, and we'll also find some more mysterious items in that water. But for now, the best tactic is to jump and avoid those bombs as much as possible. find oil rigs that we'll have to avoid and the aim of this level is to land on the oil rig at the very end of the level. Unfortunately you can't see the oil rig unless you block the diamonds to highlight the sky and so you better hope that there's going to be a diamond near the oil rig otherwise because it is black on the black background you might not always see it in time to land on top of it. Having found the rig, it's not always possible to land directly on top of it and get ourselves to that next level. This game comes with that music, so I've layered over the top of it some music, in this case the spy who loved me, and it's a pity that the C64 music in this game is pretty dire. Moving on to the second level, the Spy of Me is of course a scramble type game where we have to blow up a certain number of missiles and they will lob crabs on our heads. This game isn't too hard, it's not too difficult and the only difficult part is to blow up the helicopter which appears and also to avoid the rig which that thing has taken off from because you cannot jump over it not like the previous oil rig that you have to jump over on the previous level. The 
helicopter is difficult and it will take a number of shots to knock that out and of course ducking into the water in this case is optimal because it means that we can get out of some of that trouble. The helicopter doesn't even lob bombs on our heads and that's fantastic and a few shots on target should knock that thing out and if you don't we'll have to go through another scramble type level and get all the way back to it. Luckily there are a few checkpoints in the game and once we've made it to a checkpoint we'll respawn from that point. Fortunately some of those are directly before the rig so we'll crash into that if we're not careful and that's another quirk of this game. After that we move on to Moonraker and I don't have the Moonraker music so let's just play the Octopussy music instead. And of course Moonraker we find ourselves in a very similar White Lotus Convertible Esprit where we can convert that into a submarine and it's an identical level although we will find a number of extra enemies and also find finally we can destroy the satellites in the sky and destroying the satellites is actually the aim of this level and so you'll have to pull left and right and jump madly as well and of course on this particular level it be known as Moonraker if any of the rockets take off from the bottom of the ocean and they make it into the sky that's game over so speeding up that footage I'm simply taking on those rockets and making sure that none of those actually make it into the sky find enemy submarines just like the spy who loved me even though this isn't called the spy who loved me and this game seems to be a mashup of all the James Bond genres under James Bond license but none of these features actually remind me of an actual James Bond movie except for of course the White Lotus Esprit. This is the easiest of all the levels in the entire game. What we have to do is to pull back on the stick and make sure that we destroy as much as we can and then when we find the satellites in the sky we'll blow them up at the end of the level and that's level complete. This being the easiest one is the only one that I can complete and it's a pity that you cannot select the levels from the title screen just like you can on the Atari conversion. The most difficult part is taking on those satellites, so let's try to concentrate on the final one and move on to our next level, which is of course the hardest level in the game, and it's the fourth out of the four levels that we find in James Bond. In for your eyes only, if you remember, there was an underwater sequence in there, but that won't be shown in this particular video because it's not in the game. And as you can see, the first difficult part is to get over a mountain, and then a helicopter will come along and bomb our heads. And so we cannot maneuver once we get over that mountain, and that's the first trap. It's very difficult to get over that very first section, and I always die on this section until you work out the trick and the trick is usually to jump up just before that guy launches the bomb that means you can move between the bomb and the helicopter and get out of that section and if you manage to not touch the scenery you can get through it and even if you do get through that section unfortunately you'll be killed by the divers and the frogmen just waiting for us over the next rise This 
been the 1984 Bond game. It was very new on the Commodore 64 and on the game consoles at this time, and they definitely didn't use the license to good effect. They used the Bond car and the James Bond name, but that's about it. And there isn't much fun to be had playing this game, because the first level is very frustrating, and the easier later levels are very difficult to get to, and I had to use save states, unfortunately, and infinite lives, in order to try to get further in this game. Next game is Operation Fireball, and that was released by Sean Sudden in 1987. In this game we play unofficially as James Bond, and it comes with James Bond music. case we drive a red car and not a white one and unfortunately it's not a Lotus. Operation Fireball already, and in this game we have an unlimited ammo, and what we have to do is to blow up everybody on the road in front of us, and you can check out that review on the Lemon64 Tube channel, and that is waiting for you. You can see wholesales in the background and helicopters dive bombing us, some ice on the road, and being a red car it's not exactly Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge. Several scenarios in the game, including land-based games and water-based games, you can see we've now jumped into a speedboat, and it's not easy to avoid all of these missiles, and my controller is moving around in complete crazy circles and figure of eights to try to avoid all this stuff. We have shields, and as long as we don't get hit, we can save those shields and preserve those onto the next level. And you can see every level moves very seamlessly from one to the next with a cutscene. Now we jump onto a pair of skis, and now we can career our way down the mountainside, avoiding the usual enemies. <laughs> The game is very fun and it's quite difficult but it's not hard once you get to know the controls and how to play it and I managed to sit through this and complete it on maybe my fourth sitting once I got used to those controls. Now we jump onto a bike even though it looks more like an ATV and this isn't ATV simulated this is something a lot more playable and weaving between all of these projectiles in this case. It is quite fun and quite frantic as well, and as an unofficial James Bond ripoff, this definitely is cut above the usual ones, and it contains more action than the official James Bond game that we saw. get to pilot the helicopter and at the end of this we get to take on an enemy submarine and we can blow that up. Maybe this was a spy who loved me, you can see the backgrounds and the many parallax layers in the foreground. Operation 
Operation Fireball is an excellent game, it's an unknown classic, and I definitely recommend that to all James Bond fans who like James Bond ripoffs on the Commodore 64. Next it's Live and Let Die, and this is the first game brought to us by Dumark. And Domark was created by Dominic Weekly and Mark Strachan, so it's actually Domark, even though most people pronounce that Domark. And this was released through Elite Systems in 1988. And Elite were famous for releasing budget games, and this was a budget title based on their Boogie Boy engine. And as you can see from the first level, it's basically Boogie Boy set on water, and we can blow stuff up on the training mission. Let's get some more score. This one is the Antarctic, or maybe the Arctic, and you can find snowy wastes and also extra pickups as well, including some missiles, and the red ones are fuel. tunnels and you'll have to blow up mines in tunnels and you'll also have to pick up the blue one which is extra extra fuel and running out of fuel on these levels is very easy to do. I have managed to complete this game back in the day and I did love to complete this but now of course having not memorised it whatsoever my skills are completely useless and we have reviewed this game Live and Let Die on the Lemon channel and so check out LemonTube64 for a review of this game. Boogie Boy game, I think that this adds something to the genre and as a live and let die game they did basically as much as they could with this on a Commodore 64. And jumping over things is the staple of the game because that's what happened in the movie and you will get to jump over things in this game, unfortunately not roads, but we can jump over rocks and there are doors to blow up as well and I think if you pull back and press fire and maybe press the space bar we can launch one of our three there you go, missiles, and those also blow up the helicopters. If we can launch ourselves into the air, we can blow up those helicopters. And a brown package means that we can collect those extra missiles. like the fact that it can blow up gates and at the end of every level there will be a big thing to blow up like a refinery and you have to blow it up a little bit like first strike that we saw another elite game and yes it is possible to blow those things up and have a great time in the game unfortunately it's a little bit too frustrating until you memorize every single part of it and collect all of that fuel because fuel is the most vital aspect of the game and health in this case isn't Demark licensed game and you'll be seeing Demark for the rest of this video because Demark were lucrative in the face of it when creating James Bond games. Our next game 
Released by DeMarc is The Spy Who Loved Me, released in 1990. And it begins with some funky James Bond music and some updated graphics as well. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to drive the car. We're driving another White Lotus Esprit, which converts into a submarine. And we find, yet again, just like Operation Fireball, water and oil on the road. And enemies as well, and we'll have to avoid their firepower. Who Loved Me is, as far as I know, an Amiga conversion and they haven't included all the levels in here, but the first few levels definitely are. And as you can see, this is a cut above the Spy Hunter graphics that we got on the early Commodore 64. Just like Spy Hunter, we can jump into a boat as well. And that boat can run off ramps and it can also fire smoke behind it. And also it has a missile and we have unlimited gun power so we can fire off all our bullets and even run over people who were swimming here in this marina. Level 2 is almost identical to level 1 in terms of graphics and audio, but visually it's a much longer map. Unfortunately, we don't get a map like the Amiga version on the far left of the screen, but just like Spy Hunter, we do get a lorry. From here, we can upgrade and buy things. By picking up the Q tokens, we pick up money along the way. I have 83 coins at the moment. That affords us the sub capability, which is the submarine conversion, and the lasers and the pursuit missiles, the smoke refill as well, and the armor, and we can also get the intercept missiles as well. I have unlimited money and unlimited health on these levels because you can see mines in the road and even if you go over a ramp the wrong way you'll simply turn over the car and die. It's very easy to die in this game and if it wasn't for the infinite health I'd have died a long time ago. When you get to the end of course you have to jump off the end of the ramp and that turns us into a submarine and that's a very nice effect and it loads up fairly quickly on this version as far as I know this is a single load which loads up all of these levels into memory at once which is amazing This underwater section will get the underwater boss which is very difficult and you can get mini bosses and all the bosses from the Amiga version are in here. They're all very difficult and sometimes very much harder than the Amiga version but you can see moving on to the fourth and the final level this is the jet ski level where Bond has to get through to the floating base which is floating around the Mediterranean and Cole Stromberg is waiting for us. Unfortunately, we don't get to kill Cole Stromberg in this game. Next, it's A View to a Kill. This was released in 1985, again by Domark. In this game, we have to, first of all, find Mayday, she is falling from the Eiffel Tower and we're driving around Paris in a Renault and we'll have to get to the drop off point and pick her up. Again I've included music from the Commodore 64 rather than music from the game and the game does have quite a few bugs in it, not least this driving section, because Mayday can land at any one of a number of places in the game, and if you don't hover around the exact right place, she will disappear and that makes the level impossible. Having tracked down Mayday, we move on to the second level, where we find ourselves in San Francisco where we'll have to rescue Stacy from a burning building trapped in City Hall. 
and we can search objects like impossible mission and we can also use a gun as well and use keys and we'll have to investigate this area and it helps to pick up the gun from the start and then you have something to use against the barriers that you'll find in this game. Hall is massive and it will take quite some time to walk from one side to the other and luckily the doors are mostly open and you can use door keys and door passes to open those and if all else fails you can use the gun to shoot through them and so you should be able to get through all of this maze you can also use the steps as well the front steps and the back steps are available although you cannot use the lift in the game that is broken because of the fire tons of items to pick up and that also includes the final level and that is yet another impossible mission where we find our guy running around on platforms collecting items trying to rescue Mayday and trying to reach Max Zorin at the end of all this to blow the bomb which is supposed to be blowing up the San Andreas fault which is supposed to rip San Francisco into two pieces that doesn't happen as long as you pick up the items in the right order and in this case we can use the dynamite to blow up this barrier and rescue the maid. Lots of things to do on this final level of the three in the view to a kill and I wish I had figured this out back in the day because it's quite fun although it's as buggy as heck and sometimes you can fall straight through the scenery and have to restart the level all over again. At the end once we find the bomb we can winch ourselves down and then deactivate the bomb with a code sequence just like impossible mission and then hopefully we can winch that bomb out and remotely detonate it and that completes the game. Next we have The Living Daylights, released by Domark in 1987. The Living Daylights is another great movie and one of my favourite movies. At the end of the first level you switch to the Walter PPK and blow up the black guy that completes the level, otherwise you'll be using the paint gun and then you get to pick up a special, extra special item moving on to the next one, in this case it's the infrared goggles. We can't really see much until we fit that and then we can see all of the enemies and I think even a special spy appears on this particular level that we'll have to destroy using the infrared and then we can simply run to the end of it and complete that level. See behind us, General Pushkin. See behind us, we have Sergei Koskov, who's supposed to be defecting from Russia, and we'll have to escort Sergei around the oil refinery in order to get him out of the country and he doesn't take any damage whatsoever all we have to do is to run like heck wearing our hard hat and we can run like heck throughout this entire level as long as our health is still healthy when we get to the end of it it means we can complete the level Daylights is a Timothy Dalton movie, you can see they've gone to some extra lengths to create some extra action and adventure and of course if you stop on any of the first four levels to shoot any of these guys you'll just get massacred so what I'm doing is jumping over the pipes and rolling under the smoke and hopefully I can run my way to the end of the level.
rescue Koskov. We then move on to the next level where we find the mansion and a guy throwing bottles of milk towards us. And I think you have to use a special weapon to get rid of him. You can see the helicopter as well. The mansion is an incredibly hard mission, and by using a level skip, let's check out some of the later levels. This is Tangiers, which reminds me of the Bagels game that we reviewed, where we could jump on top of buildings and jump from one to another. Like Bagels, this rooftop chase is very much more difficult, and you have to shoot the enemies in advance. Next we move on to Afghanistan where we can fit a special weapon, in this case a bazooka. So let's get rid of this guy with the bazooka and also we'll have to take care of the usual guys as well and maybe run like heck as well to save us getting any damage. Game, we will face the big boss himself in the mansion to kill Whitaker. And I think you have to employ a special weapon, maybe a bazooka to kill him, or maybe a toy soldier, or whatever the special weapon is. But if you skip to the level just like this, you won't get the option to choose the extra weapon, and so you can't blow this guy up. Final 7th 007 game is Licensed to Kill. This was released in 1989. This was another Domark label, or Domark, and as you can see, extra effort has gone into the graphics and maybe not into the gameplay department because I never got off level 2 and my entirety of trying to play the game. So, License to Kill was the second and the final Timothy Dalton movie. You can see it begins with the helicopter, where me and Felix Leiter hopefully drop into enemy territory, and from there we'll have to use our gun, and we'll have to use our wits to shoot the enemies one by one. into a special spot we can jump from the helicopter and that's the best part of the game because that sends us on to the second level where we find Sanchez's jeep is there waiting for us and we'll have to find a safe spot to destroy the jeep. the end of Franz Sanchez but he will return later on to kill us but unfortunately we're not going to get through to the truck driving section because even though I've got infinite health the bullets are at a premium and if any of the guys touches then that's life over we'll have to go back to the last checkpoint or try the level all over again. The second level is huge and it will take a long time and a lot of patience to actually get through it the controls are very unwieldy and it's my least favourite of all the Bond games on C64. games that you might be reminded of. There is also Sly Spy Secret Agents, which was another James Bond rip-off. Also, I think created by Demark. And if it wasn't, there was also Thunder Jaws, which was definitely a Demark game. Thunder Jaws is another James Bond rip-off where we play as Arnold Schwarzenegger playing James Bond. And there's also James Bond The Stealthy Affair, which I'm not sure that appeared on the C64, but if it did, they basically used the character name. And we won't be reviewing that game because it's an adventure and these are action games that we are reviewing in this video. I 
liked all of these games, I think perhaps Operation Fireball is one of my favourite games, and I really did used to love Live and Let Die back in the day. I always wanted to figure out how to play A View to a Kill, because that always baffled the heck out of me. The Living Daylights, I just used to run through it without shooting anybody. And perhaps James Bond, I think I played that and completely wrote it off because I couldn't get through the first level. And definitely the Moon Buggy first level can be off putting to anybody. And finally, License to Kill, I did actually have this on original budget label cassette. But again, I didn't really spend much time with it because it's very difficult, it's very time consuming, it's very easy to run out of bullets, and again, if you touch any of those enemies, you'll have to go all the way back. So, I'm not quite sure, but I think there is also a time limit on this level, and this isn't really the best fun that you can have, and for a more action adventure sliced by type of adventure, we'll be covering sliced by very soon. But for now, thank you once again for watching another Lemon 64 Play Guide and Review, this time to 7 top 007 games on the C64. And I hope to bring you another Bond themed game next week, so stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, thank you very much. Good night.